The United Arab Emirates has been trying hard to curb the dwindling of its precious underground water table. To this end, it invested $15 million in nine different rainmaking projects in 2017. This investment seemed to pay off this past week when the desert country was blessed with very rare torrential rain. Here are the details. The Independent reports that the United Arab Emirates has been abuzz with excitement over the very unusual torrential rain that fell in the desert country for a few days around Monday, July 19th. On Twitter, the UAE's Weather Bureau hinted that much of this unseasonal downpour is due to its multi-million dollar cloud seeding efforts. One of the ways in which the UAE seeds clouds is by using electricity-inducing drones. The drones were developed by the UAE and researchers from the University of Reading in England. They get catapulted into the air and cruise through the sky, gathering weather data and giving a nudge to clouds in the form of an electrical charge. The idea is that the electrical charge helps clump water droplets and other particles together to make new and bigger clouds that actually have a chance to generate much-needed precipitation. This is important since the UAE typically receives only 4 inches or 10 centimeters of rain per year. The idea is to make the droplets inside the clouds big enough so that when they fall out of the cloud, they survive down to the surface. Some scientists think cloud seeding doesn't really work, while others think it works too well. They point at instances like China's heavy reliance on a weather-altering system. Experts have argued that this system could be weaponized to steal rain from neighboring countries like India. If it turns out that cloud seeding can indeed be used to steal rain from neighboring countries, we might even see wars for rain in the future. Chinese weather authorities have said rainfall levels in one part of central China have hit their highest levels since record-keeping began 60 years ago, according to the BBC. The result has been floods that have devastated the area and caused at least a dozen fatalities. Here are the details. More than 10,000 people in central China's Henan province have been evacuated as a result of record rainfall, according to the BBC. Within the region, at least 12 people have died in the city of Zhengzhou, authorities have confirmed. As stations and roads have become submerged and rivers have burst their banks, Al Jazeera is reporting severe power outages and says that thousands of firefighters and troops have been deployed to the region to help with search and rescue. Floods are common during China's rainy season, annually causing chaos and washing away roads, crops and houses, according to Ajahn's Front's press. However, on this occasion, weather authorities have issued the highest warning level for central Henan province. The city of Zhengzhou has seen a year's worth of rainfall in just three days, and the BBC reports that although many factors contribute to flooding, a warming atmosphere caused by climate change increases the chances of such extreme rainfall. As forecasters said on Wednesday that the rain would continue for at least another 24 hours, Henan province authorities said downpours had caused damage worth around $11 million so far, according to Ajans France press, with thousands of acres of crops ruined on top of structural damage. That damage could be about to increase substantially, as authorities have warned that 16 reservoirs have seen water rise to dangerous levels, and the Chinese army has warned that the Yihetan Dam in the city of Luoyang could collapse at any time. As reports reveal the extent of existing damage, several particularly shocking recordings have emerged showing subway passengers trapped in carriages, submerged in water up to their necks. Al Jazeera English's China correspondent tweeted that most of those who had died did so within submerged subway stations. Speaking to Al Jazeera from Beijing, she added that rain was continuing to fall in Zhengzhou. People are shocked, trying to register what is happening, she said. This is the most rain that many people have seen in their lifetimes. As train services are suspended and hundreds of flights canceled, Al Jazeera also notes that one of the more immediate causes of the flooding is the widespread construction of dams and levees. Ajans French Press explains that these levees and dams have cut connections between rivers and adjacent lakes and disrupted floodplains that previously helped absorb heavy rainfall. You might not be able to buy a new smartphone next year because of a drought currently affecting Taiwan. Here's how that works. Taiwan's worst drought in decades could further strain an already unstable global supply chain for production of the semiconductors that power the world's notebooks, monitors, TVs, smartphones, tablets, and cars. In an average year, Taiwan receives 2,500 millimeters of rainfall, the most of any OECD equivalent country, according to Taiwan Business Topics. However, while typhoons usually hit Taiwan from the east during the rainy season and help replenish reservoirs, in 2020, for the first time in 56 years, no typhoon made landfall. The effect has been a drastic drop in water supply, with water levels at the country's largest reservoir, Tsengwen, falling to their lowest in 15 years, and the Baihe Reservoir now completely dry, according to the AFP. 
Taiwan's semiconductor industry is vulnerable to the drop because its processes for cleaning chips and creating a hypersterile environment for their production are water-intensive. AFP reports its largest manufacturer, TSMC, alone goes through 156,000 metric tons of water a day. Other sectors are also vulnerable. According to the CIA World Factbook, industry uses 10% of Taiwan's water supply. Households use 20% and agriculture up to 65%, despite the latter contributing just 1.8% of GDP. Lack of storage capacity makes Taiwan vulnerable to climate change. Citing Taiwan's Water Resources Agency, Taiwan Business Topics reports reservoirs only constitute around 25% of its water supply, with rivers providing almost 50% and groundwater extraction 30%. Taiwan can store only around a month and a half's water requirement. One possible solution to the crisis, building more dams, remains unlikely as the ideal locations have already been used. Taiwan Business Topics also notes that Taiwan's mountains and lack of an extensive river system mean most rainfall is washed into the sea. Lake Mead is the massive lake that was created when the Hoover Dam was finished in 1936. This vital reservoir has now reached the lowest level it has ever been, and weather forecasts show that it will probably drop a lot lower. If this happens, all electricity generation inside the Hoover Dam's wall will shut down, and thousands of farms will turn back to the dust they were before the dam was built. Here are the details. NBC News reports that water levels in Lake Mead, the largest U.S. reservoir by volume, fell to 36 percent, its lowest level ever on Thursday, June 11th, as the region continues to face the effects of a devastating prolonged drought. Lake Mead was formed when the Hoover Dam was built in the 1930s. It provides water for urban, rural, and tribal lands across the southwest. Officials expect levels to get worse through another dry, hot summer. In normal years, the dam produces enough electricity for 8 million people, but the water shortage will slow energy output. Every foot of lake level decline means about 6 megawatts of lost capacity. The Hoover Dam's energy capacity has already dropped by 25 percent, and levels will continue to decline through this autumn. Las Vegas recently became the first city in the U.S. to ban useless grass around streets, offices, and housing developments in an effort to conserve water. The devastating drought has caused the Colorado River system to decline to half its capacity, and the basin has seen historically low inflows over the last 16 years. The rapid decline has prompted plans for the first ever water shortage declaration from the federal government. The declaration, which will probably be issued in August of this year, would affect distribution to states and Mexico. Hurricanes are severe low-pressure weather systems that form in tropical waters over the open ocean. Hurricanes are the most violent storms on Earth. In other parts of the world, they may instead be referred to as typhoons or cyclones. The scientific term for all these storms is tropical cyclone. Tropical cyclones that form over the North Atlantic Ocean and Northeastern Pacific Ocean are called hurricanes. In the Pacific Ocean west of the International Dateline, they are called typhoons. Cyclones are formed over the South Pacific and Indian Ocean. Tropical cyclones form when warm, humid air rises from the ocean, hitting cold air. Convergent winds force the warm air into the atmosphere, where it releases heat as it condenses into clouds and rain. The exchange of the heat from the surface creates a pattern of wind that spirals up around the eye of the storm. Water vapor from the ocean continues to fuel the storm. The tropical cyclone's high winds creates a massive mound of water along the front of the eye that causes storm surges as the hurricane moves over the ocean. A tropical storm is classified as a tropical cyclone when its maximum sustained wind speeds top 64 knots. That's the equivalent of 74 miles per hour or 118 kilometers per hour. The extreme weather that has seen record-breaking wildfires in California and the strongest hurricane to hit Louisiana in 160 years looks set to get worse. On Thursday, September 11th, the U.S. Climate Prediction Center said the weather pattern known as La Nina had officially formed. This is why La Nina is important. La Nina brings dry, warm weather to the southwestern U.S. It brings cool, wet weather to an area reaching from the Pacific Northwest and southeastern Alaska to the northern plains and central Canada. La Nina, which means little girl in Spanish, is a complex ocean atmosphere phenomenon that occurs every few years in the Pacific Ocean. Under normal conditions, winds from the Pacific Ocean push warm water from the west coast of South America towards Indonesia. As the warm water moves westward, cold water rises. When La Nina occurs, winds in the Pacific grow much stronger. They push even more warm water towards Indonesia, causing more cold water to rise near the west coast of South America. This could worsen the drought in the southwestern U.S. this winter while bringing a cooler, wetter winter to other parts of North America. 
These changes in sea surface temperature are felt around the planet. La Nina can lead to more rain in Australia and Indonesia, stronger hurricanes and typhoons, and more lightning in some parts of the world. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.